A missing San Antonio woman found dead in Louisiana. How authorities in Louisiana were able to identify the woman 10 years after she was reported missing. Police think they found the person responsible for a deadly hit and run crash. How evidence left at the scene helped them to find the suspect. Chances of storms tonight, we could see some heavy rain, maybe a few strong storms too. We'll detail that forecast for you coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. What had been a missing persons case in San Antonio, definitely now a murder case. That's according to a sheriff in southwest Louisiana. He has confirmed that a severed head found in Cameron Parish has been positively identified as that of a woman reported missing here. Katrina Weber tells us why it may end be up to San Antonio homicide detectives to solve this case. With one discovery, questions in two states have been answered. San Antonio police had made a plea three years ago for information about 58 year old Sally Hines, who disappeared from the city's northwest side. This week, they have answers by way of a different investigation in Louisiana. Nothing come up positive until this lead right here. Cameron Parish Sheriff Ron Johnson says dental records helped his detectives close the case on a severed human head found there, showing it belonged to Hines. This was a murder for sure. There was no uh, accident involved. Johnson says jail trustees picking up litter found the head in a plastic bag in a marshy area where bodies have been dumped before. They believe that these gators here, that we have a abundant supply of gators, will come eat these bodies or these body parts. Louisiana authorities cracked this case with help from a tipster who saw a recreation of the head and matched it to Heinz photos. Tess later confirmed it was her. As it turns out, the whole time San Antonio police were looking for Hines, authorities in Louisiana were looking for answers. Johnson says they actually found the head back in 2018, about a month after SAPD announced that Hines was missing. As far as we know, we have no record of her being here. Johnson says it's possible she may have been killed in San Antonio. He says he plans to work with SAPD in whatever way he can. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, an update to a deadly hit and run on the northeast side. Police are arresting a suspect in the case. Robert, Robert Diaz is charged with failure to stop and render aid. Police say he hit and killed a man while driving on Perrin Bottle Road, not far from Wurzbach Parkway in Loop 410. This happened on Monday. Officers say they linked the suspect to the crime after looking at surveillance video from a nearby business and examining evidence left at the scene, which includes debris from a red sedan. Police said they found that damaged red sedan at an apartment complex where the suspect lives. Arrest paperwork states that Diaz told police his car was damaged because he hit a deer. Officers maintain that the damage to the vehicle is inconsistent with hitting a deer. Now to the latest in a murder investigation. Nearly three years after a man was found dead on a west side street corner, police still don't know who's responsible. So now officers are asking for your help. Brian Walker killed back in June of 2018. Officers found him shot to death in the parking lot of Valentino Food Mart at the corner of Chihuahua and Hamilton Streets. Police are hoping someone with information will come forward. Officers also investigating a burglary at a storage space. Police say that five people were involved. Surveillance cameras caught the images back on March 12th. According to police, the group broke into the extra space storage on 281 and Brook Hollow Boulevard. Officers tell us they got away with two large safes that had more than 15 weapons, jewelry, as well as sentimental items. Police say all of that was valued at more than $300,000. They also say the suspects had to rent a U-Haul in order to get away with those safes. If you know something that can help police solve either of these cases, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And now to the latest on that deadly rampage at a rail yard in San Jose. The shooter killing nine people before turning the gun on himself. We are learning more about the victims today and as ABC's Kaylee Herding reports, one hero lost his life while trying to alert his co-workers. Nine innocent men came to work here at this light rail maintenance yard in San Jose, California two days ago, and they never returned home. Now their families and this community are in mourning as hundreds gathered for a vigil last night at San Jose City Hall. 
This is authorities are releasing new surveillance video from the rampage. You can see the shooter there. He's calmly walking across the rail yard. This is after he's already opened fire in one building and he's moving on to the next. And we're learning new details about the shooter's troubled past. A Department of Homeland Security memo detailing that in 2016, border officials detained him after a trip to the Philippines. They say he was carrying books about terrorism and fear and manifestos, as well as a black memo book filled with lots of notes about how he hates the VTA. That's the Valley Transportation Authority where he worked for many years. And the sheriff's office now saying their investigation has shown that he has been a disgruntled employee here for much of that time. Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, San Jose, California. Jury selection back up and running in the Bear County Courthouse today in preparation for in-person trials that begin next week. A moratorium on jury service was ordered 13 months ago due to the concerns over the spread of COVID-19. So beginning today, 500 potential jurors will begin their selection process virtually. Then Judge Ron Ron Hell says that they will be given instructions to come to the courtroom for in-person trials. They begin next Thursday. Ron Hell said all COVID-19 protocols, which includes social distancing and face coverings, will remain in place. It is one of the busiest times on the road, but it can also be one of the most deadly. Memorial Day weekend is here and TxDOT is reminding drivers to be safe. According to the agency last year, there was a 16% jump in the number of people who died while not wearing a seatbelt. Stephen Cavazos explains why TxDOT is urging drivers to buckle up as we head into the official start of summer. Memorial Day weekend is here, and with more vaccines rolling out, more drivers are expected to hit the roads. Obviously, people are going to be doing a lot more traveling. They're going to be visiting families and, and, you know, having celebrations. In anticipation for the busy weekend, TxDOT is reminding people to click it or ticket. It. It's their annual campaign, which was launched in 2002. The goal? To buckle up. Laura Lopez with TxDOT says they have seen a positive response to the campaign over the years. The seatbelt use rate has increased by from 76 percent to almost 91 percent. But she says 2020 was unusual. TxDOT saw a 16 percent increase in the number of people who died from not wearing a seatbelt. That's just so disappointing to us because it's it's extremely important and it's such a simple task. Lopez says expect to see an increase in the number of police officers and deputies on the road this weekend. Texas law requires that drivers and passengers all be buckled up. Not doing so can cost you a $200 fine. Children under eight must be restrained in a child safety seat or booster seat unless they are taller than four feet and nine inches. Not doing so could mean a $250 fine. Our number one priority is safety and we want to make sure that drivers have make that their priority as well. Stephen Cavazos KSAT 12 News. It's going to be a warm weekend and maybe the perfect time to cool down in the Comal. But you won't be the only person floating in the river. Memorial Day crowds expected to gather this year. How New Braunfels is getting ready still ahead. And the Dallas Cowboys defense should be better this year thanks to some guys getting thrown into the fire last year. We'll explain coming up in sports. While powerful odors make most people want to run away, there are some creatures out there who actually are attracted to that. After the break, Alicia Barrera has some extreme facts that are going to make you squirm a little bit, courtesy of the new exhibit at the Witty Museum. A new exhibit at the Witty may have you and the kiddos walking away with some cool new facts about critters you didn't even know existed. If you're okay with squirming a little bit, as Alicia Barrera learned, one creature can survive everything from dehydration to space radiation. Well, we need superpowers to live with no sunlight, function in very extreme temperatures, or be able to hold your breath for more than just a few seconds. But did you know that out there in the world, there are actually creatures who do this on a daily? Well, come learn more at the Witty's new exhibit. Extreme Creatures Life at the Limits is all about the natural world and the power of natural selection. While human bodies can't withstand extreme situation, this exhibit highlights the creatures living in those harsh environments. Take the tardigrade, for example. At the Witty, you can see the larger than life model, but they're actually a 
microscopic animal that, according to experts, can survive dehydration, extreme temperatures, even space radiation, and would survive the space vacuum, which means extreme oxygen deprivation. Not impressed? Well, what about locomotion that surpasses human technologies? Little dragonflies put a helicopter to shame. Did you know they can hover without moving and fly upside down and backwards? And you'll definitely want to check out what the mimic octopus does. It truly lives up to its name. The exhibit includes life-size models and interactive areas to give curious minds a better idea about just how strong, fast, and tolerant these creatures are and the importance of their existence here on Earth. Because when you walk in, you're, you're immersed immediately in sights, sounds, different things moving around. Um, we, we even have some smell interactives, which is not a, a usual thing in an exhibit, but um, I think all the senses are going to be touched and, and a sense of wonder and awe. It opens tomorrow and tickets to Extreme Creatures exhibit are $5 plus admission. Reporting from the Witty, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. As life gets back to normal, concerts make it a comeback and some big names are headed our way. That includes Miranda Lambert, Georgia, rather Florida Georgia Line, Harry Styles, but it's sold out and The weekend. Head over to KSAT.com and you can see a list of all the performers that already announced their dates for their shows. You can see some of these stars as soon as this summer. And if you love movies and need something fun to do with your family, the drive-in at Lock and Terror just released their lineup for the summer. The tickets are on sale now for showings through June. There's plenty of options for every member of the family, and tickets range from $20 to $30. For the full list of movies and dates, you can head over to our website at KSAT.com under the Local News tab. It wouldn't be a Texas summer without a day on the river. And while last year the pandemic had people avoiding large gatherings, this year locals and tourists are hitting the water once again. Our Jonathan Goto spoke with people in New Braunfels who are gearing up for Memorial Day weekend crowds. It's not even the weekend and the Comal River is already seeing its fair share of visitors. Yeah! But the turnout is expected to be much more come Memorial Day. So during those big holiday weekends, uh, the New Braunfels Police Department does have extra river patrols. Those patrols are there every weekend during the summer, but in particular on those busy holiday weekends. New Braunfels Mayor Rusty Brockman says the safety and well-being of guests is a priority. He says it's nice to see people getting back to normal. Last summer was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking because of the pandemic that we were all dealing with and knowing how devastating it was to our families and our community, but then it was also heartbreaking to know that our visitors and guests could not come and enjoy our beautiful place. While masks aren't required on the river, Brockman says they encourage people to maintain their distance. He says all other park rules haven't changed and must be followed. We want young kids to be wearing the, the life vests. We want people to be safe when they get in the water. Uh, everyone knows that What's underneath the water not, is not always seen. Shane Wolf, general manager at Rock and Roll River Ride, says being back in business is certainly a blessing, considering they had to shut down last year. He says they employ over 150 people. Coming into this season, uh, all the outfitters, the CVB, the Chamber, the city, we're all just excited to have everybody come back. Uh, no question at all. Doors are wide open, arms are open, and excited for all of it. Thank you! For this bunch, the opportunity to be out on the river with friends is one they certainly don't take for granted. Just be able to get out, hang out with your friends and do it safely, I think is great. You gotta stay safe, even though this virus did hit, that doesn't mean that other things can't happen. So just being precautious in what's going on. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Nice to see big time tubing back in South Texas. But maybe not this afternoon and evening. Oh. It could start to get a little bit dicey. I, I think later this evening and tonight, we, we're going to see some more storms around, so we do have to watch that. Maybe Saturday and Sunday would be a little bit better if you're going to be heading out to the rivers. Uh, the aquifer down a 10 foot foot today, 666.1 in your pollen count. Everything's low. This is good to see. Mold is low, grass is low. We are watching the potential for some storms tonight. We'll look at that and look ahead the next couple days coming up.
47 years in broadcast news and at KSAT 12. Today, our newsroom saying thank you and farewell to veteran reporter Paul Venema. This morning on GMSA at 9, he stopped by the station after a year of working from home to share some of his most memorable moments in his career. 47 years, you've covered a few stories. You yeah. know? I mean, we've, we've from, from spot news, hurricanes, and so forth. But I think the ones that have been most meaningful are the ones that I've started at the very beginning of the story as it developed and carried all the way through to where I usually end up is at, in court covering a trial. And, and two of those really stand out to me is the, uh, the Branch Davidian standoff in Waco was one of those stories where we were there. We spent 51 days in, in Waco covering that thing. An incredible commitment. Uh, also, from years of covering killer cases to forming a friendship with one of the most famous country music stars ever, Willie, head over to KSAT.com and watch Paul's entire debriefing about his career, 47 years. And then tune in tonight on the 6 o'clock news. He'll have one last Q&A before his final sign-off. He used to hang out with Willie like two, three, four times a year. I know, they're buddies. There and, yeah, that's great stuff. I used to hang out with them too. I'm Willie? not as famous as Willie. But or Paul. Paul. Oh, and I, yeah, I feel oh, like I'm honored. hanging out with the greatest of all time. He's, he, a lot of people don't remember this, but he was actually started out here at the anchor desk. Right, he, he used to be right here. Yeah. And uh, he was an El Rey Feo. He's yeah, done a yeah. lot of very interesting things in his life. You can sit and listen to Paul for mm -hmm. hours. Uh, and we have. Just keep going. They're amazing. <laughs> it's incredible. We're we, going to miss him. We thank Definitely. him for all that he's done. Well, sad to see him go, but uh, hopefully he enjoys his retirement. Well, let's take a look at the uh, time lapse here over the last uh, several hours. And we started off this morning with cloudy skies. We've had some bouts of drizzle. You can kind of see it there. Almost looks like fog coming through. That's that lower visibility that comes with the drizzle. We're still seeing a little bit of that around the airport, 77. So if you're out and about, you may have to use your windshield wipers. Uh, it's, it's still drizzling on spots, and the dew point is still way up there. It's 74. That is a ton of humidity. East, southeast, really winds at about 9. And as we look at the live radar, we're picking up on some of these very light returns. That's the drizzle or light shower activity, and that'll continue probably for another hour or so. We're, we're thinking that we may get a little bit of clearing this uh, this afternoon, but it's going to take some more time here. We're still very much in the clouds around San Antonio. 81 Stinson, 77 Randolph, 82 New Braunfels, 76 Rio Medina, 74 right now in Tarpley, and close to 90 in Catula. That's been one of the hot spots. Uh, they are starting to see some sun down there, and that is helping to push the temperatures up. Okay, so you see the cloud cover here around Bear County starting to break up in Atascosa County. Uh, seen a few breaks in Wilson County, so that's what we have headed our way, but it'll take some time for the clouds completely break up here in town. A few showers off to the east as well. Places like Howitzville could see a light shower. Victoria, you'll notice there's now a new severe thunderstorm watch box to our north. That's because we've got storms firing now along some outflow boundaries and a frontal boundary. Uh, it's kind of a complicated setup here. There's our front. We have a couple boundaries that stretch out from that that are sort of floating around. And that's what makes these forecasts so difficult. We've got to figure out where these boundaries are, where we're going to get thunderstorms to develop. And when that happens, we'll have a better idea of how they may work their way down into South Texas. But we feel pretty uh, confident in the fact that we will see some storms tonight coming in from North Texas. There's just still some questions as to exactly where and exactly when. Uh, there is a severe weather risk today. Area shaded in orange. This was just updated. And Storm Prediction Center thinks places like San Angelo, Midland, uh, Sterling City, that's where they could get some stronger storms this afternoon. And then in the yellow area, slight risk. And that does now include all of San Antonio, all of the Hill Country, and out towards Eagle Pass and Carrizo Springs. And I think that's mainly this evening and tonight. So here's one of our computer models. And again, they're not going to have a great handle on this because, again, there's uh, just a lot happening. But by 6 o'clock, it does show some showers and storms developing, shows some activity out west, and uh, shows some of that stuff coming in from the north. This is around midnight. Perhaps a cluster of storms affecting the hill country, dropping some heavy rain. Could be a few strong storms. This is 2 a.m. Shows it coming through the I-35 corridor and then eventually working its way down to the coast by tomorrow morning. Even still, we could see a few uh, isolated storms tomorrow afternoon uh, once again. And as far as rainfall goes, and this is a generalized one to two inches off to the west of San Antonio and then a half inch to an inch 
uh, San Antonio East, but this is uh, subject to change. I just want to give you a general idea here that uh, we could see up to two inches in spots. 40% chance of rain tonight, 30% chance coming up tomorrow, then 84 Sunday, 85 Monday, 20% chance of rain. All in all, Memorial Day weekend looks okay. We're just going to have to really watch tonight. And again, there's a few more chances here and there, but it will not be raining the entire period. 20% uh, chance, as I mentioned, tomorrow, 84 Sunday, 85 Monday, 86 on Tuesday with a 30% chance of rain. And we got more chances next week, and we could see some more pockets of heavy rain. Guys. Something to watch for sure. Thank you, Justin. The Cowboys getting some help at tight end, and the Texans are playing some games with the media in Houston. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Even though the Dallas Cowboys went 6-10 and 10 last season, there were a few bright spots. One of them was rookie Trayvon Diggs. The second-round pick pretty much had to learn on the fly because he ended up being a starter in 12 games as a rookie cornerback, including the season opener. He wound up with three interceptions. He had to do it because there was no offseason thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. And now, as he reports for his first-ever organized team activity in his second season in the NFL, he gets to go up against one of the best new young wide receivers in the league, C.D. Lamb. This is all new to me. You know, so it's actually a blessing. Uh, I'm actually happy we can do this and we can get together, you know, with the guys and get all these reps in. And, you know, I'm really enjoying it, you know, uh, hanging out with the, uh, with the, new, the new guys on the team, um, you know, getting to know, know the new coaching staff and, you know, just creating a vibe. So, you know, this is really good that, you know, everybody's here, you know, everybody's coming to work and, you know, we're having fun with it and, you know, grinding at the same time. So, you know, like I said, it's creating a, a good vibe, good energy uh, around the building and good energy in the room. So, you know, I, I'm excited for it. Another player that produced during the COVID-19 pandemic, tight end Dalton Schultz. He's the backup to Blake Jarwin. Remember, he was forced into action after Jarwin's season ended as fast as it started. In the first game of the season, he tore his ACL. Schultz needed to step up, and he did. It was just his third season in the NFL. He had a career-high 63 receptions, 615 yards, four touchdowns. Now with Jarwin on the mend and his continuing rehab, the Cowboys look to have two healthy and strong tight ends to start the NFL season, which starts September the 9th for Dallas against the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm so excited to see him back on the field because, I, I mean, the ACLs are brutal, um, especially to go down like that in game one. Um, he's put so much hard work and time in. Um, he's, still got a, he's still got a ways to go. Um, but, I, dude, I, I can't wait to see him um, finally go out and, and prove to everybody that he's the tight end that, you know, everybody thinks he is. And um, I'm excited to have that, that two-headed monster in the room that, you know, hopefully we can take advantage of some defenses this year. In the meantime, the Houston Texans have their organized team activities going on in Houston. The media was allowed to attend the workouts and reporters were welcomed. But how do you like this one? There were rosters with no numbers for players who are working out. Remember, new general manager Nick Casario comes from the New England Patriots, an organization that did everything it could to keep the media in the dark, especially when it came to injuries. Only the defense was on the field at the Texas training facility yesterday at NRG Stadium Complex. Basically, what it is, is just that we've created competition and basically we've created competition at all positions. And, and, and that's what we want to see. And that's what we want to get done out there. And that's what's happening right now. It's really not so much the numbers as it much as it so much as is, is that look, there's competition at all positions out there. And and that's the that was the intention of when we put this roster together was to create that. And that's what's happening right now. Attention Costco members, one of your favorite things about warehouse shopping is coming back. We have details in the next half hour. And those with prostate cancer have another option for treatment. A look at the drug that was just approved by the FDA coming up. New at five today, what is happening to the price of chicken? It's ruffling some feathers. Some restaurants, especially those that serve up wings, are facing skyrocketing costs, and some of that may be passed along to diners. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore says how the tight chicken supply is another pandemic effect and what you can expect in the weeks and months to come.
Senate Republicans have blocked the creation of a bipartisan panel to study the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The Senate fell short of the 60 votes needed to consider a House passed bill that would have formed a 10 member commission evenly split between the two parties. Four people died during that January attack. A police officer collapsed and died afterward of what authorities said were natural causes. Microsoft says an established group of hackers has launched a new global cyber attack on more than 150 government agencies, think tanks, and other organizations. According to Microsoft, targeted, the group targeted 3,000 email accounts that got through an email marketing account used by the U.S. Agency for International Development. From there, the hackers sent phishing emails that tricked recipients into clinging to a Clicking a link, that link was actually software that gave the hackers access to their computers through a back door. The company believes the hackers are part of the same Russian group that carried out last year's attack on software vendor SolarWinds. In the first case of its kind, three police officers in Tacoma, Washington, have now been charged in the death of a young black man because of their use of deadly force. ABC's Aaron Kontursky has more for us. Manuel Ellis echoed the words of other black men who have died in police custody. Cell phone video released by the Ellis family lawyer and being reviewed by police shows the deadly encounter. Last March, Ellis had spent the night playing drums at his church and was walking home from getting a snack when the officers confronted him. They said he was hassling a passing car, but eyewitnesses said there were no signs of aggression. Oh my God, stop hitting him! Hitting him, just arrest him! Separate videos show the officers using what the charging documents called excessive unjustified force. The medical examiner said Ellis died from lack of oxygen due to physical restraint. This is the first time the attorney general in Washington state has charged police officers over their use of deadly force. Two of the officers face second degree murder, the other first degree manslaughter. The news may prompt any number of mixed emotions. It will no doubt intensify questions about the safety of black lives here in the city of Tacoma. The officers union called it a politically motivated witch hunt. Ellis's family struggled to make sense of it. Manny was a drummer his whole life from the time he was three years old. He was in the church loving God, living right. All three officers were held until a hearing Friday. The Tacoma Police Department is conducting an internal investigation now to determine whether the officers should be fired or whether the case should prompt a change in training. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. The CDC predicting the U.S. will soon make even more progress in the fight against coronavirus. According to the agency, cases, hospitalizations and deaths will fall over the next four weeks. The CDC says this is due to an increase in vaccinations. Ten states already have 70 percent of adults with at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine by July 4th. However, there's still some concern over vaccine hesitancy and getting kids vaccinated. And even though these numbers are on their way down, the estimate the CDC came out with forecasters up to 606,000 deaths by June 19th. That means there could be more than 12,000 additional lives lost between now and then. Another option for treating prostate cancer, the Food and Drug Administration approved Polarify. It is a drug for imaging cancerous lesions in men diagnosed with the disease. It's the second drug to be approved for this type of imaging. However, the first drug is only available in two sites in California. The new drug is anticipated to be distributed at multiple locations throughout the United States. The FDA says the new option will give some men with prostate cancer greater access to imaging, which can help health care providers in assessing the disease and the best care for options. Looking outside with live cam. Yeah, it's looking like another one of those days. Uh, cloudy and rain expected. Yeah, we've got some light drizzle coming through right now, but the main show looks to be later this evening. Still a lot of questions as to when these storms will move in, but we think at least sometime this evening and tonight, we're going to see some storms across our area. If you're traveling north up by 35, bit of a travel alert for you. There is a severe thunderstorm watch now just north of Austin, and we are starting to see severe thunderstorms erupt up there just west of Dallas along I-20, working their way towards I-35. And there are several warnings at this hour, some flash flood warnings as well. Uh, and these storms will likely work southeast throughout that uh, watch box. So uh, 
beware if you are traveling up towards Dallas Fort Worth, you may run into some of these storms and uh, we're going to see some more again. I think later this evening and tonight. As far as cloud cover goes, still a lot of it here over San Antonio, but some breaks starting to show up near Forestville, Pleasanton. Eventually, we should see a few peaks of sun at least here in San Antonio by the afternoon. Uh, temperatures where they are seeing sun, 86 in Pleasanton. Underneath the clouds, though, 78 at the airport, 72 Bernie Stage, 76 in Bull Verde. Forecast for today, we're going to bring in those rain chances by this evening, a 30% chance, and uh, that'll continue into tonight. We could see a few strong storms. There could be some heavy rain in spots. We're going to jump into that forecast and dig a little bit deeper. Come, coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Hollywood's biggest night wasn't scheduled until February of next year. However, it's already being postponed. We'll tell you why coming up in the spotlight. Free samples coming back to Costco stores soon, where you're going to see them and how they'll be a little bit different. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. The meme stock mania continues. AMC Entertainment surging again this morning after a huge rally on Thursday. Reddit forum Wall Street Bet's newest favorite stock is pushing its week to date advance to nearly 130%. Yesterday alone, AMC jumped more than 35% and is currently worth over $26 per share. JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon has some advice about cryptocurrencies. Stay away. Speaking in front of Congress Thursday, Dimon said cryptos are not comparable to fiat currency or gold. Warning, buyer beware. So far today, all cryptos are down across the board with Bitcoin down over 6% and the second largest crypto, Ethereum, down nearly 9%. And a heads up, for holiday travelers, gas prices are the highest they've been in the last seven years ahead of this year's Memorial Day weekend. Gas Buddy says the recent Colonial Pipeline cyber attack and increased demand nationwide are driving up prices. Gas Buddy also reports that the average price of a regular gallon of gas nationwide is $3.06. This comes as 34 million Americans are expected to travel by car this holiday weekend. And that's your Cheddar News and Tech Update. I'm Brad Smith from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Get ready for those crowds again at Costco. They're bringing back the free sample next month, but there will be some added safety measures. The company got rid of the samples 14 months ago amid the COVID-19 pandemic, but they won't exactly be the way that you remember them. Workers are gonna prepare the samples in smaller batches behind plexiglass and then distribute them one at a time. Costco also making changes to its food court. Stores are bringing back indoor seating with reduced capacity and more physical distancing. Some locations are also adding outdoor food courts. Outside with live cam, it seems like just about every Memorial Day weekend, we really got to be paying attention to the weather because something's always happening somewhere close. It's, uh, it's like clockwork every year. This is the time of year where we worry about flooding. We worry about thunderstorms. We may have a little bit of that tonight, this evening and tonight. So we're watching the radar closely. So far today, temperatures haven't budged much. We're up to 77 after dropping down to 76. Now, once we see some sun, you'll see this number jump up. The average is 90. We'll be pretty close to that, I think, by the afternoon. Records 103 and 55. But again, the big story is the potential for some storms. We'll look at that potential coming up. Justin doesn't want to rain on the Memorial Day activities, but maybe just tonight? <laughs> just. <laughs> he's, he's dodging raindrops already. Yeah. <laughs> uh, following the camera. Anyway, uh, yes, we do have some chances for storms tonight. And it, like David said, Memorial Day weekend, we know uh, history has told us that we can get storms and flooding. So we, we got to be real careful with this stuff. Um, so far, uh, we've just got storms up across North Texas, and we're just looking at cloudy skies and a little bit of drizzle. So here's what to expect. Drizzle the... Uh, next couple of hours and then some sun this afternoon. Yeah, you see all the clouds out there and then tonight storms possible some heavy rain depending on where this cluster of storms 
moves. And then this weekend in general for Memorial Day weekend, we're talking about mostly cloudy skies and then an isolated storm or two. After tonight, rain chances do drop off a little bit, at least in the short term. Uh, right now, 78 degrees, cloudy skies, east southeasterly winds at about 11, although there is some drizzle still being reported in spots. We can see that on the radar here, just very, very light returns, but that may equate to some mist or drizzle out there on the roads. A uh, few actual showers as you get out towards Victoria and Quera, but even these are extremely light. Temperature wise, 70s and 80s, where there is more sun, temperatures have jumped into the mid 80s, 86 in Pleasant and 83 in New Braunfels, 79 right now, Canyon Lake, and then uh, 86 degrees of Springs, 86 out in Del Rio. Uh, the satellite picture, yeah, you can see where the break is, the breaks in, breaks in the clouds, and we're starting to see that now in Southern Bear County. So that's gonna lead to a little bit of instability as uh, we get some warming and you see some of those spotty showers off to the east. That is a severe thunderstorm watch box, which has been uh, issued for parts of uh, north central Texas, just south of Dallas there. And uh, we're starting to see some severe storms already erupt er, erupting and these are moving south and southeast. So uh, it's not so much these that we're going to watch, but there is an outflow boundary there. We likely will get some storms developing out around San Angelo eventually. You see they've got a break in the clouds there, some instability. So I think we could see some development there. And then some of those storms may eventually work their way south towards San Antonio. Several boundaries, there's a frontal boundary, a lot going on, and that makes the forecast kind of difficult. But the severe weather risk today is highest, where I just pointed out uh, that area around San Angelo, Midland, and then back down towards, say, the junction area, uh, Fredericksburg, you're in the slight risk, and that slight risk has been extended a little bit further south and east. It does include San Antonio, and I think, uh, again, that's mainly for later this evening and tonight. Now, the computer models, uh, there's a lot of disagreement here, but by 6 o'clock it does show some showers and storms. So I think we could see some activity around the area as early as dinner time, but the better chance will come tonight, and that's when we could see some of those stronger storms and maybe some pockets of heavier rain. Not everybody's going to get it, but I do think that uh, we'll see some of that on the radar tonight. And then by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, a lot of this is starting to clear out. The atmosphere stabilizes a little bit, and then by the afternoon we could see a few more isolated showers and storms pop up. As far as rainfall goes, and they've shifted this, I thought they might. Uh, it looks like they've shifted the, the rainfall just east a little bit. Uh, the, the models have uh, showed that maybe the, the rainfall will be a little bit further east with one to two inches. In the hill country, that could include San Antonio and then some lower totals as you go south and east. So the forecast, 40% chance tonight of showers and storms, 20% during the day tomorrow, 85, 84 Sunday, 85 Monday, 20% chance. And then as we get into next week, it is going to be active Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday may be a day where we could see some pockets of heavy rain. So uh, busy here. My advice, keep an eye on the radar. Check that KSAT weather app. We'll keep you updated and uh, we'll let you know if uh, anything pops up, guys. All right, Justin. Thank you. The 2022 Oscars are getting pushed back. The reasons behind that decision still ahead. And Moby Doc, a new movie about producer and musician Moby, surfaces in theaters today. We've got a preview coming up after the break.